Here's how to fix scoliosis. Anytime a patient has a diagnosis of a condition like scoliosis, the most common thing that comes to their mind is how do you go about correcting it? How do you go about fixing it? Well, scoliosis is an unnatural sideways spinal curvature from the front of the spine. And it normally has a rotational component that makes it a three-dimensional misalignment, meaning the spine not only bends, but it turns. And this rotation is into the concavity of the curvature. And in order for it to be called a scoliosis, this curve, what we call a cob angle, needs to be 10 degrees or greater. Anything greater than 10 degrees will actually classify as a scoliosis. When we look at scoliosis cases, cases, there are two main approaches or treatment options, and I call them paths, regarding scoliosis treatment. One is so what we call traditional treatment options, and traditional treatment options are what's been occurring for 30, 40, 50 years, and these treatment options are normally managed by orthopedic surgeons, and this tends to funnel patients towards spinal fusion surgery. That tends to be the, the, the objective or the goal of what ends up happening as curves progress. Conservative treatment options offers a non-invasive, non-surgical approach, and the goal of conservative treatment is to stop curve progression, but more importantly, to reduce curves. So therefore, it's much less likely the curve will progress and you're ever gonna face surgery. So the success in a conservative treatment model is not only that the curve not, not, doesn't worsen, but the curve is actually less. Where in traditional treatment options, success is considered the curve doesn't ever actually have surgery, but if it gets that bag, then the end outcome is surgery. So the definition of success is very different when it comes to trying to managing or trying to fix scoliosis. When it comes to scoliosis fusion or spinal fusion, when it comes to surgery, meaning this is the end goal of traditional treatment, what's involved with this is it takes the most tilted vertebra down to the most tilted vertebra below. So it takes these two areas and there's two curves. You'll go above and below on both curves and you're fusing uh, these vertebrae together with solid bone. And typically the, there'll be bone grafts used to actually make the spine fuse together. And commonly there will be rods and screws that are attached to hold the spine while the fusion process is actually occurring. Now, since the spinal fusion is exactly what it says, it actually fuses all the joints within the spine and actually prevent the spine from actually moving in those areas, we call this a non-functional approach because it's actually eliminating all the function that's associated with those areas of the spine and fusing it together. Because this surgery is as invasive as it is, and it requires such a such, such a, a severe commitment from the patient, meaning once you do this, there's no going backwards, that this is only left for severe cases, patients that ex that exceed 40 degree scoliosis angles or higher. Anything less than that is considered a non surgical case, and they call that mild or moderate scoliosis. Now, mild or moderate scoliosis doesn't mean it doesn't have problems associated with it. It just means it's not severe enough to consider this type of treatment, where it's called where it's spinal fusion. There are some serious side effects that could be associated or potential effects as a result of spinal fusion. One is obviously pain right at the site of surgery. Um, it's definitely going to lead to spinal rigidity, meaning you're going to have decreased range of motion in those areas because that's the very nature of fusion. It's actually fusing those areas. It can lead to nerve damage immediately. It can lead to excessive blood loss. You can have allergic reactions to the hardware where the hardware has to be pulled out. And what, what most people also don't know is what happens to patients long term after this surgery. What happens 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years from now as a result of having rods in your spine? So most patients, if they're given an option, they'll say, hey, you know, is there a way to avoid that? And therefore, we would want to treat curves before this actually becomes an option. Unfortunately, under the traditional approach option, most patients are just told to watch and observe the curve as it worsens. And there's only a very small number of patients that are actually treated at any size of the curve before it becomes severe, before you know, they're told, hey, you know, let's do this before you actually have a severe scoliosis. And even in this model, even the ones that actually receive treatment under the traditional approach that's not surgical, the best they're hoping for is that the curve just doesn't worsen severely. They're just trying to slow down progression. So how else, what other approach can we use? 
Well, there's another approach that I call a functional approach, and this is how we treat scoliosis non-surgically. And a functional, proactive, conservative treatment model is one that's not just trying to slow progression down or one that's just gonna watch it and see what happens. It is number one, integrating multiple forms of treatment. It's a multimodal approach using chiropractic care, therapy, customized home exercises, and sometimes even corrective bracing. And the goal is not just to try to slow curve progression, but actually to reduce the curve in its size. Because we know the smaller the curve is, the less likely it is to progress. Keeping curves smaller will always produce a better outcome and it will also produce the less likely of progression. Now, the surgical argument is, well, if you're treating a small curve that never becomes severe, meaning you never need surgery, you're not treating it necessarily because it never became severe enough to do surgery anyway. And since the definition of conservative treatment under the surgical standpoint is you just keep the curve, prevent the curve from having surgery. Our argument would be is, well, there's no harm in taking a 20 degree curve and reducing it to 10. There's no harm in that. The patient has a smaller curve, they're better off. They have a smaller curve moving into adult, even though it didn't need surgery at 20, well, it definitely doesn't need surgery at 10. And you reduce the risk of the curve becoming severe. So you can see this, the mindset is what limits how you approach the patient because the goals of surgical conservative treatment is just trying to say, okay, the curve doesn't have actually have surgery, where our goal is actually to reduce the curve. And by reducing the curve, we're increasing core strength, we're in increasing spinal support and stabilization, and we're also maintaining function, meaning the spine is actually moving and functioning the way it was designed to. You're not taking rods and screws and fusing it all together and eliminating all function overnight. So our goal is to maintain function. So therefore, the benefits of non-surgical approaches are number one is that they're less invasive, right? There's less risks associated with them because you're not putting screws, you're not going through anesthesia, you're not having rod hardware, bone grafts, and you don't have to live a life with rods and screws in your spine, understanding what, what effects could possibly be as a result of having those things and what you have to worry about doing or not doing. It's definitely less costly. I mean, surgery is very, very expensive and the cost is ongoing. I mean, it could be, if you're looking at multiple surgeries over somebody's lifetime, you're looking at, you know, possibly millions of dollars with the, maybe if there's even side effects or negative effects as a result of it. So it could be very, very expensive in terms of cost, not only in physical dollars, but cost in terms of how it could affect somebody's life, especially in later, later stage life. It is more natural. It definitely preserves the natural spinal function in dealing with what we have going on. And also if it fails, let's say, you know, conservative treatment, you, it's something that you don't, you know, unhappy with, you can always move back into a surgical option secondarily. But if you start with this surgical option and start with this super invasive treatment, you're, you're done. Like there's some things you can undo in life. I think spinal fusion is not one of those things because they've completely altered the, the, the integrity of your spine at that point. And treating spines conservatively after spinal fusion are, is way more difficult. And it's never gonna be the same approach because of that because of the spinal fusion, even if they remove the rods, you still have bone grafts, you still have a bone that's been cut out and removed. We have a completely different functioning spine at that point. So therefore, we know scoliosis, unfortunately, is uncurable. It's an uncurable spinal condition. So unfortunately, there is no fixing scoliosis, but and it can be managed. It definitely can be managed very effectively, and it can be managed proactively using conservative care that doesn't require a, an invasive surgical intervention, like if it's left to progress over time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.